<coughs> Hello everybody, I'm a, welcome to the Daily I'm Deal. I'm sad. Uh, we here today are looking at Dust and El El Elysian Tale, I think is the way you say it. Yeah, um, Elysian Tale. Yeah, I I'm always tempted to say it in a different way. This is a pretty interesting game um, that was made. I, uh, did you know this, Matt, that this was made by one guy? What? Yeah, one guy made this whole game. Like, it's I, pretty impressive. I, wow, with the cutscenes and everything, so he animated everything. Yeah, wow. well, okay, no, I think he made, like, 95% of it, and then some other people came in to do, like, the voice acting and a little bit of the story, I think, and that's pretty right. much it. Uh, but this is basically, this is a side-scrolling action platformer that also has heavy kind of RPG influences, both in terms of the story it gives you and character development, which is pretty cool. Uh, Matt is playing, Should and he... Start? Yeah, yeah, so if you hit up, he's going to be on my save file. So I've played, I don't know, three hours, four hours of the game so far. And uh, we're about that far in right now. So this isn't the start of the game. Uh, it's quite cutscene heavy at the, at the beginning and there's all kinds of stuff to contend with. So I figured, hey, why not? We'll just jump in a little bit further oh, on. Yes. Be before to you go the loveliness. Before you go on a crazy rampage, run off on the left. If you like, just run and just get out of this area completely. I want to okay. show show some guys something. So as I said, this is kind of an RPG-ish game. Uh, I'm going to front load the, the the video basically with a couple of mechanics that I just want to throw out there before we start. Uh, because it's side scrolling, you can imagine it's quite on rails. That's not true. This is the world map. If you use your cursor and look up, by the way, you'll see that you're just looking at a map at a campfire and that there's a character asleep up ah, there and stuff, which is pretty. And cool. the music changes as well. Yeah, mesmerizing. Just oh yeah. So it's quite a nice world map. Um, here, what I want to point out, in the bottom left is where we started the game. Um, and this is a couple of hours in, so you know how in most kind of story, The story's quite cliche, I'll say that straight away. But you know how in most stories, kind of, you, you reach your first village and then you do loads of side quests and stuff? That's what the middle kind of ruby was there. Uh, there's also like another zone too called the Sanctuary, where you can find extra characters in this game as secrets. And you can't play as them, but they go and like hang out at your Sanctuary, which is really weird. And what's weird it is... This game's got like its own story going on, it's got like a, a whole universe, you know, it's got detailed characters and choices you can make while you're speaking to them. And then suddenly, it throws Super Meat Boy at you. Really? Like one of the, yeah, like one Puzzles. of the- Puzzles? Yeah, well one, no, 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 like the character Super Meat Boy is in this game, for some reason. What? Yeah, yeah, like- uh, Oh, so, I guess they collabed? Maybe something like that. I think um, he's not the only sort of titular, like, successful indie game character to be in here either. Uh, there's a lot of hidden ones. Super Meat Boy is the first one you find who I recognised immediately. And while I was playing, I was like, whoa, what is Super Meat Boy doing here? And got really confused. And then also kind of excited about where the plot of this game might go. But I think it is just kind of they just threw him in there. Because um, it was a real... Oh, I just leveled up. Yeah, so you leveled up. Uh, we Just keep going. I'll, we'll, we'll talk about the level up system soon. So I thought that it was going to be a pretty interesting uh, game that suddenly... Did oh, it. my God. Yes. Okay, so um, a big thing about fighting in the game. Obviously, that's, that's pretty much all of the, the, the content, right? It's just fight, 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 Oops. fight. Um, and one of the big things they do to make it interesting is you have this ability called Dust Storm. Uh, there's a chest there, but you've not got any keys. Don't worry, we'll get a key soon enough so you can run off on the left. Um, one of the big abilities in the game is called Dust Storm. Uh, so if you're stood still and you right click you'll, uh, and like hold it down, you'll spin your blade out like that. The holder you, the, it, you can't hold oh. it for ages though because you're going red and that hurts you. So yeah. My god! Now you're nearly dead, you need to heal up by eating some steak. So press H for heal, which is a bit of an odd button for them to assign. Um, you can like hot bar various different foods though. Foods basically are your potions in this game and you can hot bar them to get your health back. So you can't actually progress here. This is just a side area for a chest. So, okay. Yeah, so if you run off on the left you'll see you can climb up. Um, but that dust storm ability comes into the, the, the fighting quite a lot because there's two ways you can trigger it. One if you're just stood still or the other way is if you jump and use dust storm. Actually no, so go back off on the right. Okay, so there you go. You're climbing up again. You could use Dust Storm here. So now you've got to kill the enemies to get back through the portal. Um, which is actually an interesting quirk of the game. Like, the things respawn. And because it is kind of RPG-ish, you can kind of grind on mobs and stuff. But again, I'll talk, uh. I'll, I'll talk about that later, though. Because uh, as you level up. But yeah. <laughs> if you go back off on the right, you probably don't need to kill all of these guys. I know it's fun. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going across again. Because I 
No idea. I saw what I had to get up yeah, here. Yeah, so now you, you climb up. Because it, it, there's there's a fair bit of platforming going on with the game as well as kind of the action stuff. Ah. So if you jump and hold down right uh, right mouse button at the moment, you can use Dust Storm to basically fly around the map attacking enemies, as you can see. Wow. But you are limited. Holy crap, this is epic. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? But you are limited because you can't be holding down Dust Storm for all the time. So with the fights, you'll find yourself, like, if you jump and then just attack normally a lot in the air, you'll see that you kind of float about a bit more in the air like a butterfly kind of move. And you can do all these cool things to stay aloft. I I've deliberately put you here because there's a lot of aerial combat here, uh, which is probably some of the most fun moments of the game. When you're fighting things up in the sky like that, incredibly strong. And now what makes it cooler, too is you've got this little fairy character near you. It's like a bat, right. rabbit, fox thing that, as you're going to see in a bit when we get to some cutscenes, like, has got a hint of boobage there. Uh, and it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're seeing that. It's Wow, I didn't even realize that until just now. It's really kind of weird. I don't know why she's, like, got this kind of... All these ladylike curves going on. I mean, that's just asking for the wrong kind of attention. But... Um, she's also a very weird kind of character, but she actually helps you in the fights too. They've got kind of an interesting thing going on here too, uh, where if you press middle mouse button, you'll see that she basically fires projectiles, like these little bolts that go flying out. Whoa. Uh, and you'll barely be able to see those while you're actually fighting because it's kind of a little pathetic attack. So if you stop fighting and just press middle mouse button, you'll see that she shoots them out. There you go. But if you use a dust storm, so hold down right, uh, right mouse button and then middle mouse in it you'll see that her little projectiles go into it and combo like crazy um, so the next time you've got a big fight try and there you go so there's oh, one wow. version of it um, next time you've got a big fight try and do that because that just hits tons of enemies now the little projectiles don't necessarily do too much damage but they do all count for like really high combos and that can get you a lot of points and uh, a lot of gold and stuff therefore as you progress. So, where are you meant to be going at the moment? Yeah, I, hmm. I don't do not know. Okay, so hold on. Oh, down here. Is it down? Uh, I don't know whether it is down here. Maybe it is down here. Yeah, that's the only way else to go. <laughs> so, so this is my two attacks. So I just get uh, left click and right click. That's it. Um, yeah, basically, and then the the projectiles too. Now, as you progress through the game, you're gonna well. Hopefully, if we can keep the pace up, you're gonna see at the end of this video that uh, she gets different types of projectiles that do different abilities that you can swap to and from. Uh, and also, you get all like various different upgrades. So we may as well show up the level ups. Actually, no, hold on. So there's a giant here. This guy hits you for tons of damage. Can you see you're almost dead again? Because you let him yep. hit you. Yep. There's also a parry attack in the game. Um, so if someone's about to attack you, the best way to kill giants, because they do so much damage and they're really slow, is if you hold left click just as someone's about to attack you, you can parry and knock them back and stun them. Um, and you can't see it unless you're in combat, but if you stand next to someone just as they're about to hit you, you hold basically the, the basic attack button, you can parry them um, and just hit them for a ton of damage. Um, which is quite cool, and that really spices things up, I think, in a lot of the harder fights. Uh, the thing is, from what I've seen so far... Okay, so here we go. Here's a cutscene. I'll let her talk. What's the matter? I'm afraid of the dark? Ha! I laugh at the dark! Actually, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> but look, look, look at her hands as well you when she comes up. Um, so yeah, to talk a little bit, I guess I'm talking over the, the cutscene anyway. This is the way they do the cutscenes. It's very Guild Wars 2-y. Except it's all animated and kind of quite cartoony and they look different each time. The, the, the plot is kind of hit and miss. Like for me, you know like you get these epic JRPGs that span ages and ages and ages and they all kind of have a similar narrative structure like you start the game and you've got amnesia, you don't really remember what's going on but you're in this right. same place. That's exactly what's going on here, right? Um, and you can always kind of tell sort of whereabouts you are in those games, those long stories. And this is right at the start. It feels to me at this point in the game, or it felt to me at this point in the game, that we were maybe... 3% of the way through, right? There was going to be some really long kind of arcing narrative. It was going to be really good. We were just ramping into it, right? But that's not the case. As I say, this game was made by one guy. So right now it feels like that with the story. But you're going to see it takes like a massive U-turn in a second. And it kind of just like throws tons of extra stuff in the plot like very, very quickly. Which is kind of depressing, I think. But, you know, it probably comes from the fact that this is an indie title that was just made by one guy. Um, and we'll see soon enough. The, the plot, though, itself, I guess is okay. The voice acting's a little off, maybe, sometimes. Right. 
It's for, I think it's forgivable for the, for the most part. For sure. It's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. And the the little bat character as well, she she like really wound me up at the start. I was like, oh, dude, what? She is really getting on my nerves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then she's actually kind of funny. To be honest, she comes out with some pretty funny stuff. She had me rolling around for a little while. So um, every now and then she'll come out with some little quip. And, you know, there's like this bizarre, like... I don't know why they've made her look that way, but there seems to be like all kinds of crazy sexual tension going on between these two characters sometimes. And then like there's all these women hitting on you, like as you travel through, like this blacksmith was basically hitting on me. Oh, oh you got owned. Wow, that didn't happen to me. Wow. Okay, so down I, you go. Auto save? Uh, yeah, yeah try the auto save, see where that takes you to. Oh, Let's wow. Okay, so the death system in the game, um, if you die, you go back to a save point just like this. Uh, or you can carry items in your inventory that help you like respawn immediately on the spot. They just co cost a fair bit of gold. Um, do you want to have a quick look at like the level up for a second? It's oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me kill these guys. So, yeah, have fun just ripping through these guys. Don't forget about in the dust storm, you can just be spamming her little projectiles and it will just explode all over the screen. So anyway, uh, by hitting tab, you can come to this screen here. Um, this is an Xbox port. Did I explain that already, that this launched for Xbox first? Um, no. Okay, uh, this released in, in August uh, for Xbox. It took this one guy three and a half years to make the game, so kudos for him for finally getting it out. It went on to Xbox Live Arcade, and literally, like, this week, it came out on Steam. Um, and that's why we're doing it on the Daily Deal, because it's on promotion. By the way, I need to get better at this. I need to say this stuff at the start of the video. Uh, but, yeah, so when you level up, you basically get a gem. Um, and as you can see, I've already placed loads of gems in attack and in the fidget line, which basically are just the two offensive lines, uh, yeah. which is why you're kicking everything ass basically but you're quite fragile too so then you've got a choice do you want to go into max health or defense i was going into defense to be honest after this because um this way you 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 get the defense but your healing ability still heal you for tons was kind of my my theory there and you can craft it seems yeah and you can craft stuff uh, the crafting system's pretty interesting i've only just kind of got into it but basically you don't just get meaningless gold from all of these enemies they do all drop unique loot there is kind of a bit of an MMO fetch questy type thing going on. If you hit tab again, uh, you'll see that I've got loads of side quests. So if you go to the, the, the quest tab up there, you see I've got loads. The purple feather is the, the primary one and the other feathers are secondary. And you'll see that there's one there at least that's like find me five items. But the rest are all pretty good. And this one as well, Combo Breaker asks you to get like a thousand combo, which is pretty cool. And that's quite far away from any combo I managed to get for myself. So, that's quite a good, like, strength of the game. As I say, it does feel very RPG-ish, like, in a traditional sense. Um, right. Because it's got this level up system, uh, you, you can equip different gear as well. Like, it isn't that simple. The, the combat itself is kind of just very hack and slashy, but it does seem to get augmented quite a lot by the different ways you can customize your character. You can wear two different rings, you get an amulet, you get some, uh, like, chest armor. I think you even get a helmet that you can wear. And you can, like, add augments to your weapons, too. You're just flying all over the place here. <laughs> you, you can add, like, augments to your weapons that make them do different special on-hit effects and stuff. Um, and all of that is tied into the crafting system, which it basically involves gathering stuff from these enemies. And you get blueprints as well, which you need to give to a blacksmith in addition to those items to create what you want, I believe. But as you go through this section here, you should find that you can complete one of the side quests... Um, which will be quite nice, you know. You can uh, uh, see wow, how that this... works. So far, this 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 is pretty good. Even though it's simple, you left click, right click, Jump. and boom, you're yeah, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it kept me entertained for a long time. I certainly didn't realize how much time had gone by while I was just playing this. Um, and I think there are enough like small little combos going on too. They've slowly trickled in these extra mechanics to me, and I've just kind of like look at this, look at this, see. <laughs> Like you can just fly, literally fly all over the place. Oh my gosh, I keep pausing. Sorry. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. My mouse keeps going off the the window, guys. Oh, right. Um, okay. All right. Well, that's yeah, not a that's problem usually with why. Because you could play with a controller. Yeah, so you can be, uh, being a port from the 360, you can play it with an Xbox controller. You'll also see, like, this This feels like a pretty good port. We keep talking about whether something's a good port. That's something we've been doing a lot. You notice that? Yeah, um, well, people want to know that, I think. Okay. They're yeah. like, oh, you know, is it a good port? You know, can I at least change my, my settings? Whoa, hello now. So you can try and parry that dude, or you can just own him. 
<laughs> Adios. Okay, just own him. Fine. Anyway, you've got a key now that you picked up, so you can open that chest and you can see sort of the unlocking mini game. So there are these hidden areas that you can go to, um, and you need to sort of dial your way around before the time runs out. Pretty oh, simple. Okay. And what do you buy with the gems as well? Um, well, as far as I can see, what you're getting out of the chest so far are crafting materials um, and then just money, basically, which you can then spend on uh, vendors. And Like, there's this creepy merchant guy you can meet as you're traveling around. Oh, like, like, like from Resident Evil? Um, I guess, sort of. <laughs> Resident Evil 4. Um, but, you know, the, the, generally, like, the loot just kind of absorbs into you. That is one thing I would say isn't that great. I just make sure that stuff isn't on the floor and I don't really pay any attention to what I'm picking up. I don't know whether that will change as the game goes along. Like, I need five certain items for that side quest, but I haven't taken the time to specifically seek out those mobs or anything yet. I figured I was going to complete all the side quests in the area first and then see what happens beyond there. Uh, you'll see there's a page on the floor. Oh, speaking of the merchant, he's right there, actually. Um, there was a page on the floor just to the right of you. There is, in terms of the story, everything's quite cliche to me. It's pretty fun. I've got to say, I would add, right? If I was maybe 10 years younger and I was playing this game for the first time, this would probably have stuck with me for a long time. Like, I can imagine a falling in love with this game. Like, but it's just slightly too kiddie for me these days, I think. I think it's got a great formula and it's probably my idea of the perfect side scrolling game. Like, I love what they're doing with this. It's just, it's not very gritty. It's like, it's very. Very Disney is the way I'd explain this. Like it starts, ah. it starts with like loads of deers and, and and bunny rabbits and stuff frolicking around in the forest. And it just feels like you're playing Bambi for a little while. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing Bambi in the first couple of minutes of the game. Yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, you know, but there's not there's nothing wrong with that. And um, just because that's the style and the themes that they've gone with for the game, instead of a more gritty feel, which is what you know I personally would have preferred, it doesn't mean that the mechanics they've chosen down there, actually underlying in the game, don't appeal to me because I really think they do. Here's a great aerial combat section. So you can use Dust Storm to go really high, and uh, kind of have fun and, and fight enemies up there. Wow, is that was that a floating island miles above? Yeah. Oh my god, I never saw that on my playthrough. Oh! Oh, okay, oh, and there's, that's another hidden character up there. So, you find the hidden characters in cages that you have to unlock with loads of keys. Uh, you find keys around the world, but you can also buy them from merchants and vendors. Um, which is pretty strong. Yeah, there's there's lots of different ways to get those. I'm not sure what the characters do beyond that, though. So, we'll have to see. Oh, oh you made it! Very nice. Okay, so you need two keys, but you don't have two keys, so... <laughs> so it was wasted. Brilliant. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and that's oh, it. man, I love that. Any game where I can just jump off. I wish there was a little groundbreaking there. That would, that would have been cool. A little groundbreaking animation. Yeah, for sure. The sounds are alright, though, right? I mean, I, I think it all feels oh, pretty yeah. meaty and very flashy. Um, so here we get a little cutscene where basically they're like, okay, so uh, your sword is talking to you too. I don't want to spoil stuff of the plot. What, what, the, the sword. The sword sounds like Tarek from League of Legends. <gasps> that's Gems it. That's are the voice. Truly outrageous. Yes. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. Oh my it god. It sounds just like ah. I wonder. Yeah, that's fire, dude. You can't. You can't walk into fire. You get. Okay, I'll tell you quickly how to get through this bit. Go back off of the screen, back to the way you originally came from. All right back this way um okay and there's a mechanic that we've already been introduced to in the game but can you see that fruit there on the bridge oh no okay hold on you're gonna have to leave <laughs> oh okay yeah oh there it is oh is the fruit still here okay so use dust storm dust storm is like a vacuum so imagine it's gonna suck in so walk to the near the end of the screen because you want to suck that fruit all the way over into the next screen there you go that's it so it should come with you that's it, good. Right now, carry the fruit with you all the way along. You can go a pretty far distance without dust storming and it will suck all the way over. Now climb up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't let it go into the fire. Okay. Okay, yeah, up here, that's it. <laughs> okay, so climb all the way up there and bring the fruit uh, nice and high up and you'll see that there's a, a destructible wall there. You want to fire the fruit into there. There you go. Nice. Ooh, and a page. Yeah, and this will allow you to climb up. So, a big thing with this game, some of you guys might have noticed it as well, that it looks like there's some crawl spaces around. You can break that wall on your right as well for a secret, for two secret keys. Oh, wait, if that's two keys, those are probably the two keys you're meant to use to get that hidden character. Or maybe it's just one. I have a key as well, so I might be able to get the hidden character, actually. 
Uh, we should probably. Uh, uh, we might go back to that at the end. I want to show you guys yeah. a boss fight that's coming up before the video goes too long. So let's just keep going. Oh, is this a secret only? How do I get through? So if you climb back down, I think that would have put out the fire or it puts you in a different location. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, so now you can go deeper into the village. I forgot. I was in the middle of a point. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I think that's, that's going to happen. That, <laughs> oh, whoa. Hello. Uh, yeah, okay. So this guy's here. Um, Adios. And and yeah, you're, you're coming to a boss fight here. You've just leveled up again. You might want to actually utilize that and try your best to kind of... Uh, okay, yeah, another point into defense. You're just flying through. I deliberated every single little thing I put in there. I was like, hmm, do I want to go for more power on the fox girl or the dragon bat fox girl? The dragon <laughs> bat fox girl. Or, or, or do I want to just go more on my weapons? In the end, I just went for lots of attack because I figured... Like it's never rewarding to proc it to like when with games to spec into defense early. Do you ever feel like that? Like, I never. I I always like to spec into defense when I actually feel like I need it because then I I notice the difference. Right. Because if you could dodge all your all your attackers, then you're good to go. Yeah. So if you follow but it off on the right here, you'll go into the burning village. Oh, wow. Okay. You're supposed to fly up. There we go. I flew up. Oh, okay. Up. Okay, you really went up there very quickly. Ah, uh, yes, and this is where you go off on the right. Yeah, I got confused because you have to go off on the right-hand side just to, like, progress. But, yeah, like, it, there's a lot of zigzagging and back and forth. Oh, yes, I remember what I was saying. Like, do you remember? You, you might have noticed it, Matt. There was, like, a crawl space earlier. You might have seen. I saw you trying to, like, duck through it right near the start of the video. Yeah, yeah. They're all over that? the place. There's also these walls that can like open and close if you've got certain items in your inventory. So the game seems to really be designed that you're constantly going back. Like you can grab all the treasures and stuff in the hidden areas your first time through. But as you go through the game, you're going to unlock extra abilities and extra stuff that open these other pathways and directions you can travel in. So yeah, they do really well to break out of that potentially very kind of linear shell that they could have been stuck in. Yeah, this is it. See, and then there's a bridge here. Yeah, like I knew what I was talking about. There we go. <laughs> I really don't like the um, look of this. What do you think of her voice, seriously? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something from a kid's show. <laughs> yeah, and so does his a little bit, you know, but I, 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 I tried very hard to look Just... past it. And then we've got Tarek speaking to us as a sword. I truly outrageous. <laughs> like, just... <laughs> I knew I recognised his voice. I was like, I know this guy's voice from somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised to hear it's the same like voice actor. I really wouldn't. So yeah. you skip on ahead. Uh, this is kind of a cool place because there's bodies here for the first time. Like, you know, I I, I prefer it when it's a bit more gritty. And oh, this feels so yeah. PG, like, for such a long time that now with the bodies here was kind of cool. But look, it's it's Mew 3. It's uh, the big bad evil guy. And then this is the moment in the plot where, as I say, I feel like up until this moment, you kind of you kind of know where it was going and the pacing it was setting. And I was slowly getting involved in the universe and stuff. And then here it just goes, boom, here, look, loads of plot. This is the big confrontation. Suddenly here's your nemesis. Here's it, and it just throws it all at you very quickly. Um, but it is still compelling. You know, this is about as far as I've got as well. Wow. Just so, that you know. so this is part of his amnesia. He doesn't remember any of this. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, you don't remember my name, um, but he he makes it sound like maybe the monsters aren't the bad guys. So the the, the plot kind of gets a little bit more complicated in terms of that. And this is kind of a hard fight because of the way that I'm spec. So I do tons of damage, but I also take a lot of damage. So you're gonna have to be careful. My recommendation: try and use dust storm as much as you can. Um, you are the only monster here, puppet. As I turn your bones to char. Your final thought. It seems like one of those like uh, children shows on Cartoon Network, where they just hire yeah. some some people or or. Well, we Whoa! Get, uh, yeah, so it's pretty it's pretty dangerous here. Like, I, oh, I so think you can't just fly around then. This guy did uh, the the guy that made the game did an awful lot of it, but I think a big part was there were sections of the story and, and the plot that was kind of the the one moment where he kind of stepped aside. Another thing that was done by someone else was all the music for the game. Now, I think it's got a pretty balling soundtrack. But That was same... hard? Yeah, dude, I struggled on that fight. You, 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 <laughs> you had my advice of the dust storm. Like, I didn't die on it or anything. Hey, 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 you died in this video. I, ha I never even saw the game over screen. I just knew how it was working, so... <laughs> but, yeah, um... Like it's got, a, <laughs> it's got a good soundtrack, but um, it's always got like the crazy music. Yeah, you make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs>
oh, and now we we have to have we have to sympathise. Yeah, and now on? like it's it's just suddenly taking such a massive turn, and now we're kind of in the weird area, and now it's like, oh, he's my rival, but look, now they're humanising him. They jump ahead very quickly here. Um, and if you have a look at like your save file and stuff, it, it will say already that I'm like 20% complete with the game, which is kind of a scary thought. And you know, there's this system with the merchants where you can sell them certain materials so that they can catalogue them and constantly stock them, which right. I think is a great RPG mechanic. But if you look there, it's like there's 44 materials and I've already got 22 of them. And you know, stuff like that kind of indicates the game's not as long as maybe I would want it to be. But, um, you know, it, 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 it's been very strong so far. Uh, but yeah, I I gotta say my thoughts, I I like it, I like it, and it, I'm a sucker for 2D, and the way <laughs> the style that he's doing it is different, It's really yeah. different than you know another guy who's spent you know a few gears in his room creating a game, you know, most of the time it's really you know subpar games, you know, and this is has some has some. Quality. What's it called? A yeah. <laughs> Quality and charm, should I say. Yeah, it's got a real identity for itself, for sure. Yeah. And it's like. Even though uh, something's wrong with that fairy or guardian. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, the guy thought it was going to take him three months to complete it, and then it ended up taking three and a half years. <laughs> which, uh, you know, I can oh, totally gosh. see that happening. I've seen that happen with too many, like, mods for Skyrim and Oblivion and stuff. It's like, oh, I'll be done with this total conversion in a couple of days, and then it's like, two years later, they're still not done. <laughs> Um, Should I skip this? Yeah, if you want to skip, I mean, we've not really been doing a good showcase of the plot. Uh, I mean, I've said in general what I feel about it. It's an okay story. It's kind of cliche. You said dust to dust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just said dust to dust. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, the voice actors might grate on you a little bit, but I think it's, it's pretty compelling at least. Until this big bit at the moment. I don't know, this threw me a little bit here because I, I felt like I was kind of with it until this. But here, you're about to get another ability. So if you jump into that orb... She, the rabbit back fox lady with the, the lovely bosoms and like, look at that thigh. Look at how curvy and like sumptuous her thigh. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> She's gonna have... Looks like a chicken leg to me. It makes me hungry. Oh my God. No. <laughs> She's pretty funny though. Like she's got some pretty witty lines. So anyway, this is a kind of a new mechanic, which we can showcase just at the end of the video here. She's got different projectiles now. So if you hit middle mouse button, that's the default one. But if you press F, you'll see she's now learned a new one. Which is the fire one, which he's just learnt from that character. So do that in a dust storm for the viewers. No! There you go. No! Uh, there's some enemies you can practice it on just over on the right here too. Um, yeah. And this is one More of our cool one liners. Hold on, wait for it. Well, I'm a little fairy girl. Children are not. They don't look all that like happy me. to see us. You're not bad at that. Actually, <laughs> actually, no. This isn't. The, this isn't even the dialogue I thought it was. I thought this was something else. She's like, she's like at one point. Oh, I, I can't fly. She's like, I'm scared of heights. And then you say, Well, hold on. You fly off. Oh there you my go. gosh. It's beautiful, isn't it? So oh, awesome. And then you just flew through the thing. Anyway, look, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I would like to show you Super Meat Boy because it's just so weird having that character in this game. Um, but you know, that, that's, this is pretty much the gist. There's a hub area, a village, uh, with lots of different characters. You get different choices in conversations too, which I've not shown off. There's kind of a bit of a morality thing. Uh, and the, the, the core of the gameplay, the fighting, is pretty awesome, right Matt? Yes, it is. It is. It's, it's fun. So it's yeah, fun. this is uh, Dust and Elysian Tale. It's on promotion on Steam right now because it's only just come out. It was on Xbox, but it's now just come to Steam. It's like £10, uh, but unlike like bad bots, for example, I actually kind of think this is worth it. I really do. And I, this might be a strong contender for me to return to um, just because I kind of, I'm, I'm probably going to complete this game. A, because it's not that long and B, because like it's, it's got me pretty gripped. So uh, yeah, uh, anything else? No, that's it. You just want to kill things, basically, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's it, see the thing in games, com it's all about the combat because that's what you're going to be doing all the time. No, so all the, the combat time, is though. good. If if the combat is good, then you're good to go. Yeah, it's a plus when other things are better, see, especially in the RPG. See, there is a difference there between me and you because, like, I consider so much. Like all of this, even if you're just sat there in a like reading a quest box or in your inventory or something, I, I can consider that like all like super important too. But anyway, anyway, we we're already half an hour. Oh, in. Of, oh, of course. I I love story though. Uh, we're, we're gonna be here for an hours. <laughs> Anyways, guys, see you guys later. Yeah, we'll see you <laughs> next time. Jesus. <sighs>